with liberty and justice for all. Gentlemen, you see before you the uh, uh, April 10th and April 16th minutes. Uh, Make a motion to accept. Do we only both at one time? Or yes. Just... I'll second. Motion by Jason Bullock, second by Joe Barnes. Any discussions, corrections, or additions? Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Before you, you have the bills, claims, payments, and transfers, including the late list. So Motion by Larry Count. Second. Second by Larry Morphew. Any discussion? The late, late list. Discussion or questions? Okay, roll call. Morphew? Yes. Small? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Barnes? Yes. Johnston? Yes. Cowan? Yes. Motion carries. The bills, claims, payments, and transfers are approved as presented. Uh, next, we have Scott Phelps and, and uh, Jason Ward with the Transportation Cabinet going to come and talk to us a little bit about uh, our uh, rural secondary program as well as our flex funds. You need to come over to this mic over here. Something happened to this one. And go ahead and tell who you're, uh, you have another person with you, tell who that is. You don't? Yes, sir. Okay. Good evening, Judge. Mr. Court, thank you for the privilege to, to address the court this evening. It's been two years since I've yes. been here. Yeah. Uh, last year I was in Africa. So. Right. Yeah. So with me today, I got uh, Matt West. He's the uh, section supervisor for this area. And I also got with me Scott Phelps. Scott is our maintenance engineer for this area, and Scott's also a local to Ohio County. That's all I have with me tonight. So, uh, so tonight we're talking about the rural secondary program. You know, we come here once a year to uh, to give you our recommendations and and uh, and then let you all discuss it and, and decide whether you support those recommendations or not. So, if you go to the next slide, please. You'll see what the funding is for this year. Um, so this year, uh, the KYTC funding is at 900. And Almost nine hundred thirty-four thousand dollars, and uh, and the flex funds is twenty percent of the total funds, which is uh, approximately three hundred seventeen thousand dollars this year. It's a little bit less than what was it than what we had last year. We'll get that down just a little bit. Approximately one hundred thousand on the KYTC funds, and it looks like about five thousand for the flex funds. Uh, next slide, please. So our first recommendation is uh, Kentucky 85 from uh, Kentucky 69 <coughs> to US 62. Uh, that road has a uh, average daily traffic of 1,684 vehicles, and the estimate for to, uh, to do research on that roadway is $400,000. And just to let you know, we also uh, have a different fund that we use uh, for research, and also our F B O five, which is our MP routes. And we are paid in Kentucky 69 through, uh, through Centertown to Hartford as well uh, on that different funding there. So it all kind of ties them together. Next slide, please. All right, this, uh, this recommendation is for a bridge deck overlay on Kentucky 1245. It's the bridge over to West Kentucky Parkway. Uh, it has about approximately 700 cars a day on that bridge, and the estimate is $250,000 to, to put a new uh, deck overlay on it. And our next recommendation is Kentucky 762. It goes from Kentucky 764 to the Ohio County, Davis County line. Uh, approximately 1,000 cars a day on that roadway, and it is estimate is uh, $220,000 to resurface that roadway. And then the next slide. So if you decide to, uh, to allow us to use the flux funds this year, our recommendation for the flux funds is Kentucky 1414. Uh, it's to replace a, a double barrel culvert that is in, uh, 
it's in you know poor condition, and the uh, estimate for that would be three hundred fifteen thousand dollars. Yeah, Jason, you really don't think that we're going to do that, do you? <laughs> you know our history. Actually, you have given it to me once or twice, but okay. I always have to ask. Okay. You know, I know. Because I know. if I don't ask, hey, I'm trying to put a little humor in there. And I believe you, and I, I appreciate the humor, but if I don't ask, you're going to be like, well, I'm going to get it. Well, I mean, we could do that. Yeah, though. matter of fact, we got about a million dollars worth of uh, needs today that this group will have to narrow down to this amount. Yes, sir. So. Yes, sir. And I know, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I, we have a roadway here in Ohio County, County Road, that uh, for discretionary funds. So we, uh, we're, getting, we're, we're scheduling a, uh, a time where we can go out and, and do the uh, evaluation on it. Good, great. It did, did get to you. That's wonderful. Yes, Schultz sir. Town, is it? Does that sound right? Wasn't that right, Larry? Oh, no, that's the emergency fund. Yeah. Okay. That's the emergency fund. Discretionary fund one was Schultz Town. Okay. Well, I have not seen that one. Okay. I've seen the UB Hill well, one. Well, okay. Hill. It's emergency. Yeah, but then we already... We'll, we'll, we'll get reimbursed we'll for that one. Yeah. We've already done a good bit of work on it. Uh, the one that I got was for FD39. Yeah. And that's the one that's the discretionary funds. And it didn't look like it. I, I could be wrong, okay? I'm just going by pictures that were sent. But you all had an estimate done for somebody to pave it. Yes. And, and all that documentation was in there. So I, was, I wasn't, I'm not disagreeing. I just, I just didn't. Realized that it was an emergency fund because okay. I thought it was just normal, you know. Yeah. Um, now we had one of each. Fund. He's talking about two different. We're, we had one of each in. Okay. Well, I think the one that, that we got to do the evaluation on is the non emergency one. Okay. okay. I, I believe that's the one because usually on the emergency ones, we don't usually review those. Okay. Okay. Highway 231, heading north, about 10,000 foot. That's the. Put all the stuff That's the one we have. That is we be here, but we applied on emergency fund for it and a okay. discretionary fund on seven. I mean on uh, Chuck's down. That's okay. okay. We'll do what Either we got way, to do. We're going to do the review on okay. it. Okay. Good uh, deal. You know, and, and 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 then we'll turn it in and so you can you know hopefully get those funds. Hey, what about okay. Chick Good. Have y'all heard anything on this? It's on the back burner. Yeah. Okay. I have not seen anything on that one yet. Uh, I just got the. I just no, got that's the. That's what thingy. I was just. Ask. I thought when he said it's discretionary, that's what we got in for discretionary. Did they pay that yet? I just got the Hubie Hill one earlier this week. Started paying. Okay. Uh, I think I got Monday. Yeah. Okay. okay. Judge, okay. then I will move that uh, we accept the recommendations that, uh, from the state, excluding the 20%, which will be retained by the county to flex funds. Okay. Oh, Do second. I have second? I'll second. second. We've got seconds all over the place, Ann. Uh, okay. Jason, if I may. Uh, Asked you maybe in next year to uh, take a good look at it. Highway 69 or 54 West out of Fordville toward the county line, Davis County line. It's getting uh, they've done they've done some work on it, put some culverts in it, and it's made it nice. But it needs uh, it looks like me it needs some attention. And of course I utilize it a lot myself. But right. But uh, if you take that into consideration, be appreciated. Yes, sir. Uh, I, 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 no, Kentucky 54 is not a real secondary route. And so we have less flexibility on what roads we choose when they're not real secondary. Uh, the MP funds are, are strictly based off of a, an, uh, an evaluation system where they go out and evaluate the roadways for, for potholes or pavement tracking and, and you know, deterioration. And, and, and based on the, the score, they prioritize those routes. And from one to 300 or whatever we have in our district it's, it's a large number and uh, and we get say 10 million dollars for the entire district and we go down that list until the 10 million runs out and then in theory whichever one we did the last one that we did or left off at say was road number 15 number it's 16 priority. would be number one that ne yeah. next year in, in theory now this 54 would come under the 10 million dollars that you're talking about that's utilizing the Secondary program. Jason, you got another uh, uh, introduction to do here in a minute. Yes, sir. Uh, the, uh, uh, 54 from the 0 to the 6, we did an estimate on that and turned that in for the FDO 5. We just haven't heard yet whether or not Frankfurt's going to have the funds to pay that or not. We've been working with them on the 69 from Centertown to Hartford. That one, I'm hoping, is going to be in the May levy. Uh, 
Uh, if not, it will definitely be in the June. Yeah. When would you, the, Scott, when would you have an idea that 54 would, uh, would come about? I can call Frankfurt and ask them tomorrow. Okay. And see where it's at. But I'm thinking that we, we already did a football estimate on it. Uh -huh. And um, I'm hoping it's going to make the cut. But being that budget being what it is, I just don't know if it may be helpful here or not. I understand. It's going to depend. It's going to depend on uh, where the projects were, were putting out the bid now, where the prices come in as part of that. If they come in uh, less than what we estimate, then you know other projects get picked up, down, you know, in that list. But if they come in about where we budget or a little bit higher, then you know I think 54 was was just outside of of where our money ran out based on our estimate. Yeah. If that does happen, then next year you say it'll it'll be it'll move up to the priority list. Then, and if there's it no guarantee, if it doesn't get funding this year, there's no guarantees, but uh, it should. If it's if it's right there on the you know close to the cutoff where it's set this year, it, it should. But I don't have that list with me, so I, I I'm not sure exactly where, it's at. where it fell. So uh, so I'm just everything I'm telling you is in theory, and I, I can't guarantee that. How about well, the, let me ask a question if you don't. You got a second. Highway 136. Is that a rule secondary or is that considering? Kentucky 54 was number 15 on the list. Number 15? That is, is that a. And what's going to get down to 16? Yeah, so huh? he said, Matt says he just looked at the list because he can see it on his phone. He said it was number 15. It's, number 15 is right at the cutoff point. Yeah. So there's uh, better, probably a, at least a 50% chance he'll make it this year. Okay. Uh, like I said, it depends on where the, the ones above it when they when they go to bid, you know how the pricing comes in. But it's right at the cutoff. Well, I just want to make one statement and let, let these other guys. But uh, they uh, <clears throat> we're very appreciative of what's been done on it. You know, with the new culverts and things that makes put in it. So yes, sir. Certainly made a difference in the drainage end of it. So. Yes, sir. But and we appreciate. It. Yes, sir. Yeah. And we try to do that you prior know, to prior to the paving because we don't right. want to you know pave a road and have to cut yeah. it to put right. drainage in it after it's been paved. And you got a bunch of, you know, you got Brady Royce with patch. Uh, and Jay, could I actually go ahead, if you could at all, go ahead and review that Hoopy Hill first thing in the morning? Because we've, I have someone do it, because we've actually got equipment sitting there. Yeah, we've actually started blacktopping. Well, the patch part of it. Yeah. Well, yeah. And we've already corrected some other issues with it, so. Because we applied for it Which for emergency. Y'all have got pictures on it all. Too. Yeah, we sent pictures in. Oh, if we could review it quickly, it'd be great. We're going to try to get through this absolutely as soon as we possibly can. That, Thank you, sir. Highway 69. It, 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 can, it, I a, can, may I take a quick break here for just a second? Uh, I'd like to introduce our, 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 our chief district engineer. We had, in case y'all didn't know, we had a, a recent change in leadership of our district, and so we have a new chief district engineer. Her name is Denitra Henderson. Mrs. Henderson? She's... she's She's from uh, Morgantown, which is close to here, so she's she's a local, basically. She's, a lot, she's a lot prettier than what we're used to. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, when you look like me, it doesn't, it doesn't take much to be prettier. So, uh, you got anything you want to say? Just keep grilling Jason. He's got all the answers. <laughs> uh, I can't promise you that either. But I will try to be as honest with you as I possibly can. Yeah. So, I mean, yes, sir. I was just concerned, and, and maybe you can maybe it ain't a real secondary. Highway 136. <laughs> Not rural secondary, it is actually a P route. And we just got the evaluation list uh, for routes to evaluate this summer, and I'm asking that it be reevaluated again this year. Thank you. I appreciate it. Again, it did, on, on the ones that are not the RS, it's strictly a score based on oh, the rating. Uh, and, 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 and that's what, you know, we have some roads, and, and all these are, are viably. In danger, but we also have some that are causing safety issues, like 136. And, and you know, that's of course, I'm in the farming community and I know I've followed the semis and I've grown them, I've grown them, and I understand what it's like to get through off the road. And, and that's why I asked about 136. I mean, it was nothing against y'all, it's just I've been kind of beating this dead horse for a couple of years now. You're not the only one, <laughs> and you know, and I. I, I didn't mean that with all respect. I didn't mean no disrespect, but 
you know, I just kind of wanted to say. We're, we're aware of the condition of 136, and every year that I've been there, I've asked for it to be evaluated, but it just has not gotten the points to get within the top range yet. Okay. Which but means that we have worse roads than that. One. Yeah. Well, I know it was on the list at one time, and the pause 50 took it out. Uh, yeah. A major construction, uh, widening the two bridges, straightening the okay. curves out. Yeah, we're, I, we may be talking about two different things because I, we were talking about resurfacing. Okay. All right. Uh, I think what you're talking about is is what we call a uh, it's a project that is um, put on the uh, roadway plan that is that is um, um, that goes through the legislators and mm -hmm. and. and, and is, you know, approve through them for us to, to, to have our our, yeah. our, our, uh, our plan for the next couple of years because it's a it's a biannual plan. Um, so I can't speak to that. Well, I'm saying, I appreciate. I got it. it. She's got it. All right. See, she, more, she, she <coughs> did have the answer. Yeah. This is more her area than mine. She's very good at this. So, She's, she lives this. So Kentucky 136 did make it into the 2018 and Highway Plan. Um, right away utilities and construction money so it's in there and it's state funded but it's not uh, showing right away in utilities funds until 2022 uh, which is outside of our two-year biennium so we can't move forward with right away in utilities money now but since I'm new um, and there's no design money shown in the plan that tells me that it's likely in design now and we may need an additional year or two before we're even ready for right away in utilities so that's something, Judge, I can check on okay. and Please. get an update Please. and pass back, a, back to you. Uh, but it is in the plan, state funded. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate that. Thank you. To take, sorry, Joe. Oh, that's all right. The Highway 69. He, Scott made a mention of it from Centertown to Hartford. I was actually going to ask you about that, but you said there was already some. Yes, uh, from where 85 intersects. Yeah. Uh, South of Center Town, all the way up to Hartford. Right. Okay. Um, I was I was talking to Eli and Frankfurt yesterday about that, and they had one more question today. Hopefully, they got everything submitted so it can go to the late the May levy. So hopefully, in the May we've got the contract. Okay. And we have some guardrail on there too, Tom. Yes, there is a short guardrail project um, from Goshen Road. There's all the way up to the taxidermy shop. There's a uh, Two culverts and two bridges. Yeah. Um, one of those culverts is right there off uh, Goshen Road, and it's, it's super elevated there, and we've got a steep drop off. Uh, currently, the plan is to raise the head wall on one side and uh, extend the culvert on the other side, but we're going to put guardrail where we can. And like I said, by extending the culvert, we won't have to have guardrail on that side. We'd rather not have guardrail if we can prevent it. Okay. Yeah, it is supposed to already be going to that. Okay, and then what, what would expectation on getting it paid when you think that would be? I think he said they're going to put like November 30th completion date on it. Okay. November 15th, somewhere in there. This will right. have in the next couple of months, it'll be paid this year. Okay. Good deal. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let's vote. Morphew? Yes. Small? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Barnes? Yes. Johnston? Yes. Cam? Yes. Motion carries, and uh, we appreciate you guys so much. And gals. Yeah, and, yes. And uh, you're always so accessible to us, and we appreciate that. Um, if I can't get you on the phone, I can just grab Scott as he comes in and out of McDonald's or Hardy's. So <laughs> I, can get, I can get you out one way or the other. <laughs> um Next, I'm going to call the Sheriff's Department up here for three pieces of business. You're good. You know that girl, Ann? <laughs> I do. Good evening, you guys. Uh, we have some things that we need to uh, do for our uh, uh, financial reports. Uh, Olivia is going to walk you through the, uh, she has a quarter, quarterly report for 2018. She's going to present to you. Uh, I'll do the handing out. There. Oh, you already got it? Okay, good. Good job. 
So for the first three months, um, January, February, and March, the last year's insurance office collected $80,784.82 in their excess fee account. That, uh, that will increase. Uh, we have got some about $30,000 worth of tax collection uh, uh, numbers in there, so it's going to go up a little bit more, about $30,000 in that, in that quarter. So, motion to acknowledge. Yeah, we, do we have a motion to acknowledge to receive of this motion to acknowledge? <laughs> just the, you just want the one right now, though. Yeah. yeah, one to time. Yeah, that's the second. The quarterly financial report. Yes. Second with Joe Barnes. You got it. Okay. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Motion carries. Uh, the next thing we have, we've turned the uh, tax bills over to the clerk's office, uh, and uh, we have a uh, have an amount there. Uh, Olivia will tell you those numbers too. On April. 17th, we turned over the tax bills to the county clerk's office. We turned over 756 unpaid property tax bills, and that was the total of $126,220.69 we turned over on April the 16th. We then um, processed free postmark bills, and that is the three tax bills that you all have in your packet there. So we um, redid the transfer today on April 24th. We transferred three more tax bills that was postmark payments. So that reduced the number to 753 tax payments that was turned over as delinquent bills to the clerk's office, which brought the amount down to $125,727.59 that the county clerk's office now has. That was about 45 less tax bills this year than last year, so uh, we brought in actually about $30,600 more money this year than last at this time that means people are paying their taxes better yes and we we have a little different way we send out a second notice and we think that that cost yeah. us some money but in the end it, it, it collects more taxes right. so we think it's well worth money speaking yeah good deal <clears throat> and uh, we have some credit card online payments a lot of people are paying their taxes online and credit cards so that's going up too so they have motion to acknowledge the receipt of this report so moved motion with sam small second Second with Joe Barnes. Any discussion? Uh, Tracy, I went over to pay the card, but <laughs> I was informed that I lose my 2% if I do. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we paid otherwise. We added, I think, to each master a little extra. <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> so we... uh, nothing else. Okay. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Motion carries. You have another thing. The, the third thing we have for you tonight uh, is a Sheriff's Department data breach policy. We've talked with the auditors and uh, uh, they suggested that we uh, have a protection of personal information policy. So we have do adopted the one that the county has put together. Uh, we've read through it, the uh, security and incident investigation procedures and practices for local government this units. So we're asking to adopt to. this uh, in to our, uh, uh, the rest of our policies and procedures at the Sheriff's so Office. Motion by Larry Cam. Second. Second by Joe Barnes. Any discussion or further questions? Being none, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed like sign. Motion carries. Thank you. We appreciate thank, it. Thank you. Thank you. Bo. You're up. And do you have a copy of that resolution for everybody? It was on the web page. It was on the web page, so oh, y'all have yeah. already seen it. I've got one here. And this is, uh, actually we did this before, but what was the reason we had to do it over? For the grant? Mm-hmm. The, the amounts changed right there. The amounts, the amounts changed. Yeah, the amounts the amounts dollar amounts changed, changed a little bit. The code blue lights. So I need a motion to pass this resolution. I'll make a motion for discussion. Motion with Sam Small. Second for discussion. Second by Larry Cam. Okay, discussion. Uh, run us through me again. Basically, it's 158 lights that we're writing grant through grad, um, which is 20% on our end. 
but it's just going to be unlabored. Is all she needs this ladder too. And we're going to have uh, one couple back of the lights at a two-mile marker for emergency purposes yeah. for not yeah. one use. We don't forget it, Rick, um, I'm telling you. <laughs> it's just going to be a nine-foot post with the solar-powered lights, and I think it would be good for the walking trail if people wanted to walk at night. And and all of the money that the county is obligating is in uh, in uh, in kind mm -hmm. from the from the parks department. As a matter of fact, there's a very very good chance that some we'll even get some money back on this grant for some of our labor. So, uh, and basically, we're going to come out ahead with this project. I actually knew pretty much what this was, but I just wanted everybody to understand. Yes, sir. Okay. You what's, going out there and walk at night, Sam? Is it, what's the resolution I'm number? Going out there and walk Did you get one? <laughs> well, you can add it to it. You can put it to it. Okay, uh, we have a motion and second. Uh, go ahead and roll call that. Morphew. Yes. Small. Yes. Bullock. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Johnston. Yes. Cam. Yes. Thank you, Bo. Um, the extension service has given us their uh, budget summary for the year. And uh, it's another one of those things we acknowledge uh, receipt of. The total appropriations for the extension was uh, $482,646. Um, and we're going to file this report, and that's all that they're uh, <coughs> obligated to do. I move we acknowledge. Motion by Sam Small. Second. Second by Joe Barnes. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Next, we have our annual report from the Salt Conservation District, Darren Luttrell. And just for the record, this is the lowest funded, the least amount of tax rate we have for anything except the Caneyville watershed was less. But next to that, Salt Conservation District is the very lowest we have. Yep, we receive about uh, about 50000 a year, give or take, in millage tax. So, um, real quick, district was formed in 49, 1949, so we are in our 69th year of operation. Current members are myself, uh, Cletus Greer is the vice chairman or the chairman of ICE, however you want to look at it, if you know Cleet. Um, Walter Porter, uh, Jason Anderson, Gary Aguilhart, Brian Milligan, and Mike Newman. Um, we meet the third Tuesday of each month at 7.30 a.m. at the service center at uh, Cross uh, Al County Farm and Garden. Um, we offer two no-till drills for rental to the landowners of the county. They average about 1,000 acres a year of use. Um, Late 2016, we purchased a roller crimper to be used by uh, local farmers. And um, we delivered $1,500 in educational grants to our schools last year. We gave five $1,000 scholarships to students that wish to pursue a degree in agriculture. Uh, we sponsor an art and writing contest, uh, open to all uh, school age children here in the county. Uh, we sponsor the annual Youth Ag Days, which is attended by all the fourth graders in the county. And we are a sponsor of the annual Farm City Supper, which is, I believe, coming up Saturday night. It's Saturday night. So um, we give away approximately 2,500 trees in celebration of Arbor Day. And uh, about 150 people used this program last year. Uh, we also, with the Natural Resource Conservation Service, we offer incentive payments through various programs such as EQIP. In the last 10 years, we have leveraged approximately a uh, million dollars in equip payments to Howe County farmers and uh, directly impacting about 8,500 8, acres of land. So we work with uh, the NRCS on emergency water uh, watershed protection in the event of a major natural disaster. This program is available to use to assist critical infrastructure such as bridging the culverts. And I think a few years ago, the county did use uh, that, that program. We did. And um, real quick in summary, over the past 10 years, about $1.7 million has been leveraged through the district office to assist our clients. Um, with a millage tax of 50000 a year, uh, we bring in approximately 170000 a year to the county. So thank you all very much. Any questions? And there was a one-time deal that we got money to 
remove some debris from the that, that rough river. Through the ice, I think it was right after the ice storm. And it was. When we had a lot of floods. So, yes. all right. Thank you all very much. Thank, thank you. Thanks. Oh, would you enter in the minutes that he made that report, please? Yes. Uh, next, we've had a resignation from the airport board. Uh, we want to make a new appointment to that board. Uh, Marty, is this a three or four year term? Four, four year term. And I'm, I'm going to appoint uh, Travis Wilson to that term, and I need a roll call vote on it. I think he does the demo work. Uh, Marty, who was it resigned? Corey Render. Corey Render. Roll call. Morefield. Yes. Small. Yes. Bullock. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Johnston. Yes. Cam. Yes. <clears throat> okay, I need those uh, status changes from, if you have those, with three of them, is that correct? Uh, have three open positions. They're not new, they're open that we're uh, going to uh, hire. And some of these you've heard before. I, one case we've hired twice in that job and nobody stayed. And it is, uh, this time we're gonna put up Kenneth Hill for the maintenance cost custodian at the courthouse, part time, $10 per hour, 15 hours per week. Um, so, uh, and, and it'll begin 425-18. Kenneth Hill? Yes. So go ahead and roll call. Morphew? Yes. Small? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Barnes? Yes. Johnston? Yes. Count? Yes. The judge, that's actually cutting back to previous hours. It was 22 hours. Y yes. But we've hired at the 15 rate once before and, and nobody and they didn't stay or didn't come. Uh, next, we have a parks ground man seasonal, uh, 868 an hour. Uh, the name is James Basham. It'll be effective 425.18 for up to six months. And uh, go ahead and roll call that one. Morphew? Yes. Small? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Barnes? Yes. Johnston? Yes. Cown? Is that, is that a new seasonal or is that one that we... No, it's not a callback. It's where we replace a full-time with a seasonal, actually. Okay. Yes. <coughs> the, and the last one, is it the golf course in the, in the pro shop? And grounds work both at the at that at that area, at rate of seven dollars and twenty five cents an hour. Uh, and this is seasonal, uh, and it's uh, Samantha Leach. Effective four twenty five eighteen. Roll call. How many hours per week? Bo. Uh, no more than twenty hours. So it's a part time and seasonal both actually, but it's just mark seasonal. Roll we'll call. Morphew? Yes. Small? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Barnes? How many seasonals are you planning on having at the golf course? Uh, that's, that's just the other one I've got. The other one's uh, AmeriCorps, and then I've got Lane. That's a seasonal, too, so I've got two. Now. This will be your second? Yes. Okay. The rest of it is just going to be the AmeriCorps? Yes. Okay. Yes. Johnston? Yes. Cam? Yes. Okay. Okay, the uh, Wage Committee met this afternoon, and I believe, uh, Joe, you chair that. Would you go ahead and make that report? Yeah, let me. All right, this was a upon request of the court. The Wage Committee met on April 24, 2018, to discuss the elected official pay for the upcoming term below the recommendations this is just what we recommended. We've talked about it a couple of times, but we we come up with the final recommendations today after Justin had checked into things. It's to adopt the current salaries for the following elected officials per the KRS 
530, which are subject to adjust annual using the CPI index and the magistrates $12,652.20, county attorney $11,000. $253.00, coroner $13,161, jailer $66,830. And this is what it has been on the this current budget year. You want to go ahead and make that motion that we accept that? Yeah, I was presenting this motion. I, I'm sorry. I, I would second that. And so we open for discussion. I will say this. Uh, magistrates do a lot of work for that little bit of money and uh, and it's not been any significant raise uh, more than a CPI time or two since uh, uh, 1982 well this is the same exact thing we've done the last yes I think uh, been talking to Reddit Renetta for several several terms several terms and that's so, only if the state accepts the, C the state that's only if the county accepts the CPI raise. Yeah. Is that annually? Yes. It would be considered upon annually if we accept it for our county employees. So we have a motion a second. Further discussion? Bang, now go ahead and do a roll call. Warfield? Yes. Small? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Barnes? Yes. Johnston? Yes. Cam? Yes. Here. <clears throat> okay, uh, some of these roads we've been talking about for a long time to take in. I think we're ready to do it. Uh, viewing committee has viewed them. All of the uh, uh, easements and petitions have been signed, and I think we're ready to roll on about four roads tonight. So, uh, Larry, you're up for the first three, but you can do it two motions. I would make a motion that we take in John Boyd Lane, which is off of Weedman Loop. It's point two two seven eight tenths, and there's four homes on it. I would second that. John John Boyd. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a tragic story. That name is a young man with died that, uh, there, and that was his name. It's a lie. Certainly beats sneaky leaf. Yes, it certainly does that. You take the cake on naming them, Larry. <laughs> I didn't have anything to do with that. I don't think it'd ever be top. Sneaky leaf. Sneaky hey, leaf. Uh, let's do a roll call. I need a second. I second. Okay. Morfield? Yes. Small? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Barnes? Yes. Johnston? Yes. Cowan? Yes. And Larry, you got another one? It's got, it's got a forked road they're right. taking in, and he's going to, he's got two names, but we can do it in one motion because they're connected together. I would like to make a motion, entertain a motion to take in metal, and it's point oh .08 tenths, and there's three houses on it, and Lark comes off of it, and it's point one four four tenths, and there's six houses on it. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Larry Camp. What was the name of the first one there? Lark. L-A-R-K. Uh-huh. And then Meadow. And Meadow. Are these roads or lanes? Meadow. Lanes. 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 Yeah. <clears throat> Meadow. Yeah, like Meadow. It's off of Rob Roy Road. Okay, let's go ahead and roll call them. Morphew. Yes. Small. Yes. Bullock. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Johnston? Yes. Cam? Yes. Okay, and on this item, Joe, uh, you have ready to do the extension on J.T. King? Yeah, we've actually talked about this several times where we just had on how we was going to proceed with it, but it's the extend J.T. King. It uh, it's, was called Hideaway Lane. Isn't that right? Yes. Was it Hideaway Lane? I think that's what they called it. Yeah, that's what they were worked on it. It's got three homes on it. It's point one five three of a mile. I would second that motion. How many homes do three? Yeah, it's it's three homes in. Yeah. Yeah. And it's only a tenth of a mile. Sure. Yeah, I'm I don't know what that was. It's a tenth of a mile. It's a tenth and a half. 
Go ahead and roll call that. Morphew. Yes. Small. Yes. Bullock. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Johnston. Yes. Cam. Yes. Um, now we're ready for committee reports, and I'm sorry, we actually kind of got out of line when we asked y'all to report on Wage Committee, but it probably should have been here under committees. But has any other committees met? I know Animal Control has. We met, and I have some stuff typed up, but I thought we were ready to present it today, but I've not heard back from right. anybody, so. Let's wait. Uh, we're going to wait. Just let them read over it one more time. It's highlighted in yellow. If you guys want a copy to look at, I have it, but. We're going to try to meet maybe one more time so we can look at let everybody look over it and approve it in the committee. Yeah, Kenny had it retyped. We've got to, with well, the changes you got. Well, section. I've had two sections. Okay, oh, okay, so, okay. Yeah. good deal. So uh, just go ahead and give us a little bit of the crux of the changes, Jason, that we're proposing, that we're going to propose. Uh, Well, I hate to say this because we haven't adopted it yet. Okay, I mean, that's okay. I can tell you what we're kind of looking at. You know, that would be fine. A lot of the problems we get is that people come from the public and they have an animal that, you know, that's older, they just want to get rid of, so they bring it to the county to uh, put to sleep or euthanize, and either the dogs, either he could still have a few good years and we could adopt him out to somewhere else, or we, we, we have to end up paying the bill. And we're kind of looking at, you know, we've, we get stuck with a lot of bills of people bringing their animals in just because they don't want to pay the bills, and we're looking at ways to uh, to slow that along a little bit because that's what hurt our budget this year. If you look at the medical expenses, it was overtime, medical expenses, and uh, utilities, which you can't really necessarily help utilities too much, but we're looking at one thing is public <coughs> dropping their animals off just to get rid of them because they don't want them anymore or to get rid of them. And then um, another one would be uh, we're just looking at how we could manner over time and be a little bit more efficient with that and it's highlighted in there so that's are you talking about like where they drop them off at night or well i mean i know you drop a shelter but they're if they're sick and they're dying they just they'll bring them up there instead of them going to the the veterinarian the clinic to take care of their animal they bring it and drop it off at the county so we, we can take care of it and pay the bill you know they just don't want to have to pay the the bill to either if their animal has to be put down or what it is so they Instead of paying the bill, they drop it off at the county. Thank you, Jason. Uh, Judge, if, <clears throat> if I may ask Rip a question, I noticed the medical bills was up at the, at the jail this time, and I guess what my question is is, uh, from the time a person is arrested or whatever, how long we keep them before they get to be a state prisoner, and is that is that time is that time. causing us a financial problem as far as the medical bills is concerned it is it's, we keep them almost three years before the final sentence to go away at our expense and it's 20 years ago the worst thing we had was a toothache and that's got some drugs problems so bad meth it's bad after digest and stuff that's poison in your body and then we've got to soon i can relate to what you're talking about but on a higher scale of medical mm -hmm. but yeah they get sick then they want to come to jail and We'll take care of it. Yeah. It, <clears throat> what's, uh, what, what is the solution there? To, are they not getting them through the courts quick enough? I know they have a backlog and such, but I was just curious. As, why, why do we keep them so long before they, they're they sentenced or whatever? So. You'll have to ask the courts that. But yeah. McLean County, they, they'll do it within one year. Yeah. When we was holding their prisoners, so was, sometimes it's less than 12 months and they're gone yeah. to the big house. Yeah. We're, we're keeping them for two years, three years. Is that a pretty good percentage of the medical bills that we're talking about? Yes. Okay. Yeah, and, and that's, that is a huge problem that's going to have to be addressed, not just for us, but for counties across the state. Um, there have been people held in jail for very, I mean, I, I can't figure why in the world they're not out on bond. We have so many that's waiting for trial, and like I said, and they don't try them for years and years and years. And uh, that's a huge problem we've got to address. Is there a program out there or anything out there to where we can put uh, ankle bracelets on or something like that? We do that? have that, but the court system's got to be the one that will take it on, not us. We're all the time asking them to put them on house arrest for the non seriousness. And they're starting to do more of that now. So it's under the court's direction more on that? Uh, would we still be medical? We wouldn't be as medical liable for them if they didn't. Right. 
Well, work. that's what they told us in the in all the <coughs> jail maybe, seminars. Is <coughs> maybe we need to buy several ankle bracelets. You reckon to uh, send upstairs? You've got some, haven't you, Fred? We did. I'll tell you the the program went away, so now we brought it back to an independent person. That Right. Have you ever run the, have you ever run the numbers on them to see the medical cost as compared to the leg bracelets and how that uh, how that the court would fare? The court would fare out pretty good on that if, if we can get them to do a lot of them. Like for example, I've got 70 people over right now. I've got, I've got eight in Christian County, that's county prisoners. It's, as it's you know. It's getting hard, and hard. The indictment comes out. And it's, it's, there's a lot of serious charges. We just we cannot put the other one out of there. That's the problem. The child support we can. That's what I was going to say too, Larry. We I had a complaint in my office yesterday that a fellow that raped a young girl is out in home car incarceration right now and they're raising Cain and I would be too if it was my daughter or child that this fellow molested he's out you know uh, or accused of uh, let me put it that way right. um, out on home incarceration and they're worried about the community that that person lives in so can you put a price on that if that person commits this crime again to another child. So yeah, they, I, I, they I recommended it at, you know, at the jail seminars that I went to, but to nonviolent, or, you know, any, any nonviolent. Yeah. It's sad that someone has been charged with such a crime and they're out on home incarceration. I, I just don't agree with it. No, I don't no, either, I, Tracy. Yeah, I think right. that those, no. those particular individuals don't need to be out, but we were talking more in child support or whatever. Yeah, the nonviolent. Make a good free point. of jail space. Yeah, and the minor drug charge. Yeah. That was the number one thing that they told us when the morph that uh, right. at all those seminars we went to that uh, is the president of the jail uh, commission for Kentucky. He, he was recommended number one thing you get them in, get them booked, get them on the non-violent. Yeah, the non-violent. The non-violent. Right. On ankle bracelets and get them back out so they can't run the medical expense and everything so up. That would save you county several dollars. Yes, yeah. it would. And I, I statewide, I think what a lot of them that were seeing, some of the nonviolents were doing some things just to get themselves put in jail to get their expenses taken care of. And uh, unfortunately, you know, you know how some people can figure out how to work the system. Abuse, right. abuse yeah. the system. Yeah, right. So while, while we're on the committee block here, I want to tell you, we need road committee meeting at the next court meeting at four o'clock and we are and that is specifically to talk about the flex fund application we will have every road that you guys ask us to do in it then charlie's going to map them and tell you how many houses is on them uh and more details about the roads and then y'all will all have them in front of you and we'll end up with making a uh i i will make a recommendation based on uh, the number of houses and the number of miles is that, that most houses per mile, but that's nevertheless it's going to be more a committee thing of all of you guys deciding this time, and so that's uh, that will be at the next uh, meeting, which is when May eighth. May eighth. So at four o'clock May the eighth, need y'all here and be ready to talk about flex funds. What about a budget workshop meeting? I mean, are we uh, going to go ahead and plan. I know we're we not. Have... We're waiting for some information from Frankfurt. Which could be, how long did we say it could be? Well, he has to the 26th to veto things, and then it take, it'll probably take several days for DLG to get us our information as to what's changed. I think changed. we need to have a workshop and sit down and go over. Start at the front and go to the back and try to find some ways to find some money. Yeah. Well, uh, if it takes well, that's two what, hours or two days, I think that's what well, we need to do. Th that's what Ann and I did spend two months done. So I well, sure I think the whole done. court needs to. I mean, you know, we're the ones that's got to pass or this. So I yeah. think we need to sit down and we'll do, we'll do it and go by through it line by line. Uh, I would love to get this information. I will schedule okay. that. If not at the that's next fine. at the next court meeting, I will give you a date that we'll do okay. that. Well, the determination of the legislature, if the governor passes or whatever, will determine how our budget is to be worked out. Right. How much are we going to have to do? Okay. Right. okay, now I'm going to poll the magistrates. Sam? I have no Jason? 
No, thank you. Joe? Yeah, Judge, I have one thing. I've been brought to my attention about the fire training center, the tire where everybody can, all the fire departments can use and train at that it was in some disrepair. And um, I'd heard all different kinds of prices. But anyway, I've got a bid here that, from, well, not a bid, but just kind of an estimate for Beaver Dam Builders. And I'd just like to pass it out to the court and, and look at that being considered on a, a coal severance money. Okay. Because it's it's the uh, where the mortar has been ate out of the concrete block for, for over the years, getting that mortar back in good shape, reinforcing it, and uh, putting some metal on it to protect it from the elements. And you know we're talking about a minimum. The the what I've got here is looking at seven thousand dollars, and you know I'd heard prices all the way up to a hundred thousand. So uh, Sam, we don't want to lose. We don't want to lose that building where people can't no. train in it, and no. uh, we don't want anybody to feel like it's it's unsafe the way it is. So it'd be good to get it fixed back up. So I'd like to look at that. Okay. I know money is tight, but we've got coal severance money, hopefully back in our budget, yeah. and I think that would be something good for the whole county. Right. So anyway, I'm going to pass that on to you, Judge, and you can uh, you can get some copies and made and pass okay. it out to the other magistrates. Can you hang on this till tomorrow? We'll get that and let's get it out to everybody. That's a good idea. I appreciate that. We we need that place up and working because we know fire protection is very important, and literally every fire department in the county can use that. Correct, Charlie? Correct. And actually, right now it's unsafe to train in. I won't train nobody on a high angle. Up there, and we haven't been able to do that for over a year because of the mortar. And it'd be a lot easier to go ahead and get a little maintenance done and get it back in a safe condition where yeah. we can be utilizing it. Because I'd hate to have to look at it down the road replacing it, and especially look at you no know, one utilizing it for That's training. Okay, good deal. Anything else? <coughs> you got another item? No, that's okay, it. Thank you, Larry Cam. I uh, just want to. Emphasize to Keith how bad the need for the pothole patchers is out there. There's some there's some real craters out there. So there, there I know are. They've been working. They've been working Saturday, and the, well, unfortunately, the weather hadn't been permitting. When it's and, wet or cold, you can't do it. So we've got to have dry, warm yes, weather, and and that's a premium lately. And, but every day that uh, that that's available, we're running two. Right? You've yeah, even had the, uh, you've had them out cold patching when the when the weather doesn't permit for the truck and doing some cold patching. If, but we do have a lot, Larry. I've got them all in my district, yeah. and uh, I was down the road I there, too. Uh, <clears throat> Keith, one I might point out, too, that I was over Herbert Road the other day, and there's a there's not very many on Herbert Road, but there's one sizable crater that we need to put something in before somebody tears front end of the car. Herbert Road, uh, stick it, I guess we could stick anything in it for now, then we can come back and put something on top of it once we get the pot patch out there. Cool. It, it, it's literally dangerous, especially at night. That's all. Yeah. Okay. Um, Larry? I just got one thing. Uh, I know the state, they keep putting off this Shieldstown Road, but they need, there's, surely there's somebody we can get a hold of. They either are or they're not going to fix well, it. Well, here, I mean. uh, we'll call again. Uh, I actually had the, the uh, man that stayed in here, Mark Welch, came in here last uh, week. And the lady that was here a while ago, our new uh, district engineer, she was with me. And they fired off emails to stay again. Tell you what, next morning you're there and I'm there. We'll call, I'll call right there and let you hear what they say when okay. I call. Well, I can come in any time. I okay. mean, you know, this needs to be addressed. They, uh, I know. Uh, and, and I trust, trust me, I ask about it every week. And I think there's some wires crossed on what he was saying there because the governor's discretionary money is what we're supposed to get for Schultztown. What he was talking about, Hoopy Hill, was emergency fund, a different thing, right. which they don't have to look at. Emergency fund. We just take We're our pictures and send them in. Okay. We'll call. Any, okay. Anybody from the general public got anything for the good of the body? If they don't, this meeting's adjourned. <laughs>